Hey everyone, welcome. So glad that you're here because tonight we are talking about back fluency in grades three through six and specifically a fluency routine that exists in expressions in third grade, but it's something that I modify and I use in every grade. Okay. So, and for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Shannon Keebler. I'm the moderator of our group on Facebook and of the Math Genius Squad. So welcome. Let me know what grade you're teaching and if you've ever done the fluency routine. So maybe some of you are using it right now and you just didn't know how to use it or when to use it, or you're not even sure what it is. Tell us if you're using the fluency routine and I'm going to walk us through what it looks like and how you can use it no matter which grade that you're in. So this is how it looks if you go into the squad. So if you're in the matching your squad, if you teach third grade, it looks like this in your lesson slide decks. If you are grades four, five, or six, you will notice that this is what it looks like if you click your fact fluency icon for each one of your grade levels. So remember that math facts are our multiplication division facts specifically are a third grade standard. They are not a four, five, six standard as, but as we all know, they need their math facts in grades four, five. So it's good for us just to remember whose task it really is, which again is third grade. But remember as well that it takes three years for kids to get their addition subtraction facts. So if you look at the standards, they get kindergarten, first and second grade. So it's facts to five, facts to 10 and facts to 20 for our addition subtraction. When it comes to multiplication division, we give them one year in the standards. So you can see why oftentimes we feel like in four, five, six, they don't have it. Okay. It's, they really had one year to do it. Now it is, this routine is built into the math expressions, grade three curriculum and unit one and two. But my, my experience has been the teachers don't do it. They skip it. They don't really understand how it works. They don't use all the pieces and the parts. If you came to our summit, then you saw that we had several people present on this. So Jody Albers, Stephanie Fleetwood, thank you so much to them. They did a whole presentation on just this fluency routine and they've implemented it now with their third grade teachers across the district. They're seeing some really good results because it just, it's just about intentionality, right? So where our focus goes, there are great growth goes. So if you're not focused on fluency, you're not going to achieve fact fluency. Now, grades four or five, because it's not your standard, this now becomes an intervention routine, right? So this is if you have a what I need block, an extra 10 minutes in the morning, wherever you can fit it in, this is what goes there. Okay, so this is different from something like IXL, iReady. There's so many computer programs, right, that say that they do well with math facts. But what I find is they don't do it by fact, one. So when we lump facts together, two, they don't do multiplication division together. They teach them separately. So kids have to solve all their multiplications. Then they start working on their divisions. And that's the antithesis of what we're looking for and what research says is good practice. So that's why I like this routine. Another reason I like this routine is it is one of the most comprehensive routines for fluency and trackers I've ever run across. And I've come across a lot. So it's not like you passed your fives and then we never talk about your fives again. One of the things we find is when we do things just like drill and kill and we just do time tests, it's stored in our short-term memory. So yes, they passed it. You can ask third grade, like they passed all their facts. I'm like, yeah, for third grade, but ask your four, five, six teachers. They're saying, no, they don't have long-term fluency. That's an issue. So this routine is intended to be a balanced approach. It starts with conceptual understanding, meaning they have their math expressions whiteboard that has a number path on it and whatever fact they're on, and I'll show you the order of those facts, but whatever fact they're on, they are circling their count buys. I'm going to give you this slide deck so you can use it with your students, but let's just say they're with fives. Okay. Or they're working on their fives. They would circle groups of five and then they do their count buys. This is the conceptual. So that by the time I get to 15, I actually see three groups of five. We want to make sure that we're not just drilling facts when it's actually a conceptual issue. Like they still don't have their count buys. They still don't have conceptual understanding of equal groups. So so they start by doing a, a circling of our count bias, and then they go in and they do their equations. Okay. So if I go here, now they're going to do their multiplication and addition equations. They write like five or 15 equals three times five, 20 equals four times five. Again, I'm not going to show that whole routine because it happens in the video we're sending you, but I want you to see how the conceptual piece, there's more than just like memorizing. So they're writing equate, they're circling count bys, they're writing their equations, and then they do a study sheet. Now, the other thing I want you to know is this entire routine 
I can get it done in seven minutes. So most people are between seven and 10 minutes that it takes. So this would be an easy thing to put into place, especially in your first unit, if your grades four through six, and then third grade, it is a part of your lessons. Like it says every single day, activity one or activity two, and it tells you to introduce the next part of the routine. Okay. So four, five, six, if they did it in third grade, you're just reminding them of it and then you're bringing it back. So this is the study sheet. There are three study sheets, study sheet A, study sheet B, and study sheet C. Students learn their facts in this order and it's on purpose. So you can see they do their fives, their twos, their tens, and then their nines. But when they do their fives, they have to pass that they know their count bys, their multiples, their mixed up multiplications, their mixed up divisions. Okay. Now they've already showed they understand it with writing this and doing the multiplication division equations and addition equations if they're in third grade. Then we're saying, okay, now you understand what it means. We now need to commit these to memory. Okay. So they have to pass all three of these and then they go to their twos. So study sheet A is considered a subset. So we're looking for kids to pass study sheet A, then study sheet B, then study sheet C. But what's really great about it is as we practice how they study, so this is they study for like a minute with this, they can use flashcards, their strategy cards, they can do a sorting where these, these ones I know, these ones that I don't know, but it's always by fact. So I don't say to kids, go home and practice your math facts. I'm like, what, all 144 of them? That's ridiculous. Okay, so instead we're going to give them subsets in order for them to grow in their fluency. Right. So if you're in grades four, five, six, there's a diagnostic where I tell you how to give the assessment and you're grading it by column because every column on that diagnostic multiplication and division test is based on this. So it'll say like column A is basically all the study sheet A facts. So if they don't pass column A, then they don't even need to like worry about column B and C right now. They're just working on column A. So they go through, they practice, okay? This routine is about studying, like building conceptual understanding, practicing, practicing with facts, practicing with strategy cards. Then they do a partner check. It is completely partner ran until this point. So partners actually are quizzing each other on whatever fact that kid is on. Then they have a signature sheet where it's the partner that is signing off. So you can see that it's a verbal assessment for their count buys, their multiplications, and their division. And every day they do the same thing. Okay, partner check, one minute for you, one minute for me. If they pass, they get a signature from their partner. But notice that the check sheets are a teacher sign off. Okay, so they're passing with a uh, partner. When I do my assessments for students, let's say the whole class is doing this routine and they, I've like really gotten it down well so it, it goes flies, like it's really seamless. While they're doing that, I'm saying, whoever needs a signature from me, meet me in the back table for your, let's say, study sheet A. Okay, so anyone who's on study sheet A, if you need a signature, Mondays, I do those groups. Maybe Tuesday, I group, I, is anyone who's ready for study sheet B. So I don't quiz people every single day. You have to set a time in which you are actually assessing individuals. I don't give time tests to the whole class. I really don't feel like it is a trustworthy instructional practice. I like to do it in small group. I like to have a group of kids back at a back table. I give them the check sheet, which I'm about to get to. It will look something like... This, okay, it's one column worth of facts. I think there's like 15 facts or so on there. And I just say, hey, guys, just do the best you can. Show me what you know. And I don't even put a timer on it because I can tell by watching eight kids who's under the table with their fingers, who's pausing and doing this. Like fingers aren't bad, but I also know that at this point, you're, you don't have automaticity. Okay, fingers are a part of what we learn, use to learn conceptually and to use sophisticated strategies. This part of the routine is not about building that. This is about now we commit them to memory. There are other things we can do in our math block to make sure that students have derived strategies. They have ways of getting an answer. So when they don't have automaticity, but this routine is really based on automaticity. Okay, so as you're looking at it, they have those check sheets. That's what I'm passing them on. So when they have that signature sheet, they get my signature for these. Now, here's where I think Math Expressions has done it right. The check sheets go in order. So like check sheet one is just their fives, okay? Five multiplications, five divisions, fives, multiplication divisions mixed up. Check sheet two is their twos. Their two multiplications, their two divisions. Check sheet three or four, whatever it is, is their fives and their twos mixed up. Then they go to the next one. They learn their nines or their tens. Okay, they have to pass those. 
but then they have to do their nines mixed up with their twos and their fives. So you never really let go of anything. You do learn a subset, but then once you understand that subset, it has to be interwoven with all the others. Then you move to the next subset. So the check sheets are this. Now, one of Dr. Fusen's biggest things, so Dr. Fusen's the author of Math Expressions, when you talk to her about math facts, she thinks kids should be given five seconds. Five seconds is enough time to account by. John Vanderwall says three seconds. It's all over the board, everyone in between. Three to five seconds is what's considered automatic. Okay, but to be mastered, you have to be able to do your count buys. You have to have a derived strategy, like saying, well, I didn't know seven groups of eight, but I knew five groups of eight and I just counted on two more groups. Okay, so that's a derived strategy. So to be mastered, you have to be efficient, effective, and flexible. To be automatic, you just know them from memory. Okay, that comes after mastery. So in this case, they have their check sheet for this. So I'm checking them off. And these two, a partner is checking them off for these. And when you look at this, and when you think about Dr. Fusen's philosophy, so again, three to five seconds, but this is a blank answer sheet. Let me put this in bigger. This blank answer sheet is actually going over. Like you can see, this is one of the check sheets and it has all the answers showing. So notice that you could put the check sheet over that. So you can't see any answers. But the reason for that is she wanted them to get immediate feedback. So notice with the check sheet, like the study sheet, all the answers are there. With the strategy cards, if I go here, let's see, go back. Okay, the strategy cards, the answers on the back, it's different than a normal flashcard. It has their count buys, it has the commutative property, it has a picture of the fast array, their supports to help them. She doesn't want them to do an entire page of mixed up multiplication facts and they never get feedback until the teacher has time to grade it. Now they've just practiced one or two of those facts incorrectly for an entire page. Not to mention, it's not really effective when they're all mixed up, but they really just need to focus on a subset and then do them mixed up with the ones they know. Then do the next subset, then do them with mixed up with the ones they know, right? So as you can see though, they're practicing. So let me go through it one more time. Okay, so they're practicing on their account by board. They're circling groups, they're writing equations. This is what it means. Okay, during our class, we're working on drive strategies. Then they go in to study their facts. We talk about how they quiz themselves. Like, how do you actually study for something? They can use flashcards to help them study. They can sort their piles of cards. Like they have all those strategy cards, sort them by their fives. Now sort them by their twos. Okay, so they're doing subsets of pet facts. Then they do a partner check. Their partner check signs them off. When they have a signature for all three for a fact, they get checked off by the teacher. The teacher now does their final check off for that subset. But of course, it's never done. So there's check sheets like, I don't know, I think there's like 20 some check sheets. And then there's dashes. So then they go through the whole thing again with what we call dashes, where now they're more mixed up and more strategic. So by the time they go through all the check sheets and all the dashes, I have never met a kid that doesn't actually have those facts and stored in long-term because it just keeps cycling, right? So even as you go through this routine, there is a part of it that has it right here where they practice the facts they didn't go, they didn't know, like two to three facts. So when I say, hey, go practice your math facts, I'm specific. I say, go practice your sixes. Or even more so, I say, I want you to practice the three facts in your sixes you didn't pass today. And it has them write down three facts they didn't know. And then there's multiple things, in fact, all of this, that they have to do with those facts they didn't know for homework. That is called strategic practice. So that's what the entire fluency routine looks like. I usually recommend that grades four through six do this routine at least a couple times a, a week. In the beginning, like the first few weeks of school, I'd probably be doing it all the time. Give the diagnostic and then you work on this, right? So if you're in the squad, we give you the trackers. We give you like how you're going to keep track of it as a teacher. We give you the trackers that your students are going to keep track of multiple different versions of that. And then we break down in every unit, which facts they should be working on. So that is the fluency routine, drilling kids, time test, Okay, do the definition of insanity, doing it over and over again, expecting different results. So we're going to chunk it by fact. Are the routines during just when or part of our daily lesson routine? Fourth grade, it would be a part of your when time. Now, during your first week of school, in fact, actually during your fourth grade unit one, you're doing addition subtraction. So during your when time, I, in my opinion, you'd be working on your multiplication division because you're doing it to get ready for unit two and unit three 
right? Generally, you don't need that much intervention for unit one that I feel like you can really do this right and do it during your win time. Third grade, it's a part of their daily lesson routine. Now, if you have more than 60 minutes in your daily core lesson, by all means, put it as a routine in your lesson. I just don't think fourth, fifth, or sixth grade have the time to do this fluency routine in your regular math block because it's not really your standard. Like your standards are hard enough as they are to fit all in in a math block, much less adding in something that's not your standard. So I'd put it during your win in your win time. You just have to have a plan. You have to structure it and you have to train them on how to do it. You've probably been doing pieces and parts, but now you're ready to like really put it together. In the squad, I tell you exactly in third grade how to pace it because all I do is follow the guide. You'll notice like lesson one, they say 10 minutes. Lesson two, it says five minutes. Lesson three, it says 30 minutes. It's on your 30 minute activity days. You're doing assessing, you're quizzing students as the teacher. It's on the other activity days that you're just having kids practice their routine. Saved all the check sheets. I always, I pull the check sheets out. So I have all the check sheets, which grades three, four, five, six. I have a folder for you that will send that has them all prepared that they're all just for math expressions. But I have a file folder hanging basket and I sort mine in that file hanging basket. So I don't even let kids keep them. I don't do the check sheets when the book says do the check sheets. I do the routine part when the book says to do it, but I quiz kids as they get going with the check sheets. And so we pull out like in my file system, when they come back to get tested by me, I pull out the ones they need at that moment. So I don't do it as a class, like the book suggests. I think that partner piece is really helpful. I know in the homework and remembering it has kids doing this fluency routine at home too. I've never been successful. I've even had parent meetings and breakfasts and stuff to like teach parents how to do it. It just never really goes the way I anticipated. So I just have kids do that study math facts at home page and any facts they're not getting during class, they work on. Last couple things for my grades four, five, six. The other thing I want you to think about is now during, so that's during your win time, right? That's a routine that you can do to get mastery on things that are not mastered on. During your class, I want you to be more strategic. When you're doing something like long division in fourth grade, multi-digit multiplication, something like, for example, fourth grade, you're in the area unit two right now using the area model, single digit by maybe let's say a double digit. When you're doing that, change the factor for every single problem to the same factor. So if you have a group of kids that they're struggling with their math facts, it's not that they don't know them. Do a diagnostic and find out which ones they know. But then it's usually that far right corner, or bottom corner. It's a six, sevens, and eights. Generally, that's what they struggle with. So when I'm teaching, I'm going to say, today, friend, I want you to change every single problem in your workbook to have a six as that single digit factor. Well, guess what they're going to get good at if all day long they're only working with multiples of six? They're going to write their list of multiples. They can circle them on their count buys. They're going to use and utilize that list of multiples of their sixes for every problem we do today. They're going to get better at their sixes because you didn't have them jump back around, like, you know, back and forth between different factors. Like that's so hard on a working memory. So when they're first learning a skill, make it twos, fives, threes, something that's not taxing their working memory. Once they understand how the area model works or whatever algorithm, long division, anything you're working on, then go through and change their factor for the day and for the week by that matter until students have mastery of those particular facts. That will help students gain fluency even when they're not working specifically on their facts during the lesson. If you're a Math Genius Squad member, you know you're going to go to your unit, any unit, Okay, where you have your principles, your lesson slide decks, at the very bottom, there's a green icon that says fact fluency. I outline this for you for every unit. I tell you what you're focused on. Third grade, I tell you, even though you're introducing all these different facts, there's only a certain set that I want you to worry about automaticity on for each unit, because you're going to keep this routine, in my opinion, for the entire school year, third grade. Just because you're done with unit two doesn't mean the routine goes away. You're going to keep it all year. All right, friends, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.